In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, so now I just have to get a little uh, quick talk on Blessed Marie Eugene, whose feast it is today. His full title is Blessed Marie Eugene of the Child Jesus, as he was a great fan of St. Therese. In fact, in his writings, he foretold, uh, refers to her as being a doctor of the church long before she received that title. Um, in fact, he was born in 1894, and he lived all the way up until, I think it was 1968, 67. Um, so anyway, it was, uh, yeah, 1967. He, I mentioned in past talks, but he was a contemporary of our great father, um, Father Gabriel of Mary Maitland de Pazzi. In fact, they're only one year apart in age, but Father Gabriel Mary Maitland de Pazzi, he died, um, I, I think it's the early 50s. And so uh, I believe it's his heart, but he died at a younger age. But still, they both realized the importance of the need for renewal in the church, uh, renewal in the world when it comes to praying to God. As I mentioned other talks, in time, you know, that, um, I mean, it's just gradually in time, but it's especially clear in the 1700s, the whole idea that uh, close union to God, that, you know, loving union and ecstatic union and higher forms of prayer, contemplation in general, that's just for chosen few. And for the rest of us, it's just like say your daily prayers and live your life you know pray the rosary that's good don't try to just sit and think about god without having a book in front of you and that you just see already how wrong that is and saint therese as i've mentioned um by her merits you know help bring about the beginning of that important reform uh for people understanding the universal call of contemplation well the that revival started for sure, but then there's a problem of having conflicts. Some were saying, well, yeah, we need a revival closeness to God, but is contemplation part of that? Some said no, some said yes, now, obviously it is. But then even among those who recognize that contemplation is an important part of this, what exactly is contemplation? Um, and so while this, all this conflict was going on, um, it was hard to make a point. So Blessed Gabriel, or I, I call him Blessed, <laughs> Blessed Gabriel of Mary Magdalene de Pazzi, um, he did an excellent job in talking about where the Carmelites stand and teaching this truth, but a lot of it had to be on the defense. He was getting attacked from every side. And so with Blessed Marie Eugene, um, as time went on, the, the whole debate just sort of died down and he had a chance then just to talk about spiritual life just for the sake of instructing other souls. He didn't have to be on the defense. And so I just wanted to present some of his books and his basic teachings, um, or spe spe specifically uh, pertaining to St. Therese. Um, since I just finished giving a, a series of classes on hers, I'd like to give some more. That was just sort of a specific point of hers but he wrote so I want to say um, anyway late late 50s I believe but the first book he put out was I want to see God um, it's uh, an excellent book on the spiritual life and then a couple years later uh, within five years I believe he put out I am a daughter of the church so if we look here, I just to cover, you know, what, let's see, the first book originally came out in 
1953, and the second one came out in 1955. Um, that could be the English translation, but that was shortly after that he wrote the originals in French. So in the first book, I want to see God. He basically covered the spiritual life, um, including talking about what contemplation is. And then in the second book, he so it goes on from there to the end. So he starts by talking about St. Teresa's mansions. Again, I go into this because he's a, an excellent author and being truly Carmelite, and yet these are spiritual book sets for, for anyone. Uh, I, I knew about these books earlier. I liked Gary Goulagrange a lot and Father Arantero's works and uh, Abbot Marmion. And I, I knew of these works, but I didn't read them because I thought it was something specifically Carmelite. Well, when I eventually became a Carmelite, I read them and I realized, you know, these are excellent. These are not just for Carmelites. This is for everyone. So that's why it's worth presenting these things. But just to get a, a general idea of what's in these, so and I want to see God, it talks about the mansions of St. Teresa. Um, and what he means by, I want to see God and the knowledge of self again very sound also it helps nowadays because saint teresa of jesus is a doctor of the church uh as well as saint teresa of the child jesus so he goes on mental prayer um asceticism our lord the devil except the different people involved here spiritual growth and then he goes through the various stages in prayer, talking about uh, using St. Teresa's mansions and its early stages, what recollection is, talking about spiritual reading, distraction and dryness, spiritual friendship, spiritual direction. Um, and so you can just see the value that's behind all this. This is for anyone. And really, some people might say, well, it's for anyone who's into you know mystical life and you know life of prayer and it's kind of like um we're all called to be saints and you're not going to be there if you don't have prayer in part of your daily life so it's simple as that and he's very good at presenting that in a nice way <laughs> so then the second part he goes on to in talking about mystical life and contemplation um Maybe that's the third part, so to say. But anyway, the talks about the wisdom of love. I um, guess it's you know gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, humility, silence, solitude, contemplation, uh, the mystical life in general, and the role that contemplation has in it, uh, and the theological truths and faith. So basically. You can see he leads right up to contemplation and then it, it ends there. So it's sort of a, an excellent book just talking about prayer in general. But it basically said, ends there. It doesn't go into much beyond that. So later, a couple of years later, that he wrote the second book, I Am a Daughter of the Church. And for that one, then he starts going into detail, not just a general view of what contemplation is, but now for what it is to the individual. So it talks about union, uh, the union of the will. Uh, you could say it's a, it'd be the, the unitive way. So it's talking about what leads up to it. So the beginning of contemplative prayer, um, God is light. He talks about the dark nights. So in other words, the purification that is necessary to, to reach higher levels of contemplation. Um, and what dryness in prayer is and what's dryness due to ourselves and what is due to purification from God. He talks about obedience, unions of the will, uh, the role of the church. And then he talks about serving the church uh, and, and very, basically extraordinary favors that can be granted for the sake of other souls, uh, how to properly respond following John of the Cross. Then he goes on to further purification, the dark night of the soul, proper conduct, um, 
then what's so valuable his works in particular because you might say well this is sort of just you know general spirituality but then he goes in to when it talks about this dark night of the soul the importance of spiritual childhood um and again it's this wonderful reference to saint therese i should say that saint therese influenced him very much that's why he picked as his religious name maria jean of the child jesus uh that's particularly because of saint therese and anyway, he talks about you know the effects of the dark night spiritual betrothal and marriage transforming union um so you just see this is real sound Carmelite spirituality, but and as I tell other people, Carmelite spirituality applies to everyone. It's not just for Carmelites. It's not just for some nuns in a convent somewhere. You know, it is for everyone. So, um, so anyway, so that it's just that's wonderful. His book, um, I am a daughter of the church. His two volume series uh, is still available today. But there are a couple other books that people don't know about as much. I would like to mention as well. One of it is Under the Torrent of His Love. It's not very thick. And, and the other one is Where the Spirit Breathes. So both these books, they basically took talks that he gave uh, that were recorded. Uh, thanks be to God, they recorded. It was probably reel-to-reel -reel tape back then. And they typed out what he said faithful unfortunately they had the recall recording so he could be very faithful to what he said and published them in these books so again in under the torn of his love he goes through um the subtitle is therese Villesu, a spiritual genius and here's where he goes through and he predicts that she will someday receive title doctor of the church who would have thought um you know so it's um anyway it's it's just wonderful i just suggest reading that um you can find that too if you type that into the computer but i just want to read from his other book where the spirit breathes and particularly in reference to saint therese since i as i said I just gave some talks on that and he talks about her as being an example of simple form of contemplation i mentioned past talks you know, the whole debate you know um you know specifically what is contemplation what is what are necessary factors for contemplation and one of the big problems for division is people tried to view like um you know forms of ecstatic prayer where the senses shut down and it's just the intellect and the will united with god and, you know, is that being the only form of contemplative prayer? So this is wonderful. I just, I just read it directly. Um, I'm not reading the whole chapter, but just part of it. Uh, he said, most difficulties in regard to prayer can be overcome easily enough by an understanding of the essence of prayer. And thus he refers to St. Therese. She says, he says, Therese describes how she prayed during a certain period of dryness. Often she even fell asleep because she was exhausted and could not help herself. In other words, it was not due to neglect. She was there in the fog, she said. There was no consolation, not a single good thought, and yet she always came back to God through an act of faith and an act of love this was her prayer and we know this directly from her uh, autobiography it is a way which does not seem at all classical and which we do not find described in any other school yet she herself describes it from her own experience so saying you know this this is contemplative prayer this way of praying, as described by St. Therese, is so disconcerting that even great masters say it is not contemplative. So it's wonderful. It just shows the debates going on. And um, he's wonderful in defending what he says. 
Yet what is meant by being contemplative? It means finding God, looking at God, drawing light from God. Therese did this admirably. If it was not through contemplation that she found him, then how else was it? Moreover, we discern in her, even in this description, a gaze of her soul which carries her immediately towards God and brings her to God. He says, to, meant to support himself, he says, she herself said that she never spent more than three minutes without thinking of God. It's wonderful. What is this look at God? Clearly, it is contemplation. St. Thomas tells us that contemplation is a simple gaze on God, and she had this. She was, therefore, truly a contemplative. Contemplation does not consist in extraordinary graces, ecstasies, and experiences of God. It is the gaze itself. I believe it is very important for us to pay attention to this definition in order to pray ourselves. Um, so I just end there, but that's a wonderful point that he makes. And that's why I think he's so important to follow because in reading other authors from his time and earlier, we see that um, they will describe contemplation, different aspects of it. And it just seems like, okay, then how many people experience contemplation then? And that's why there's a whole school that held that, you know, contemplation was not part of the ne necessary for sanctity. So again, um, so we should thank uh, Blessed Maria Jean very much, um, whose feast day it is today, um, that is on February 4th. February 4th is his, his feast day. It is celebrated on the Carmelite calendar at the Mass and the Divine Office. And I suggest that you pray to him and look up on his life and read about him uh, as well as his writings. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.